Okay, we're gonna discuss buffers. So, um, a buffer, we're gonna just start in, jump in with the slide, uh, first slide on buffers. It is a combination of substances in a solution that act together to resist changes in pH. So, um, there's a separate video on pH, and if you have not yet watched the video on pH, you need to pause this and go watch the video first on pH, or you're going to have a hard time with buffers. you got to know pH first. Buffers build on our understanding of pH. Uh, okay, so a buffer resists changes in pH. And why are buffers important? Well, they're important for several reasons. First, it's crucial to maintain proper pH in biological systems. Okay, our, our blood has to... Um, have a certain pH, our cells have a certain pH, and those have to be maintained. It can't uh, vary um, widely. We have to keep it at a set pH. We also have to use buffers to maintain pH in laboratory solutions. Okay, um, A lot of research models what goes on inside the body. Um, and so if we're modeling you know, the behavior of a protein or whatever in, in a lab setting, um, we do those in solutions that have pH is similar to biological systems. And then <clears throat> a buffer system is usually made up of a weak acid and its conjugate base. So these are the two important components in a buffer. that You've got the weak acid and the conjugate base present. So for example, look down here at this first uh, reaction where you have this generalized equation for a weak acid in water with its conjugate base. And, and I'm going to label HA here is the weak acid. <coughs> and then uh, when it gives up the hydrogen, what's left over is A minus. So this is the conjugate base. All right, and this stands for any weak acid. So um, just beneath it, we have a real example with acetic acid and its conjugate base. So again, acetic acid is the weak acid here. And this is the acidic hydrogen in the car carboxyl group. When the acid dis uh, loses that hydrogen, what's left over is acetate, which is the conjugate base. All right. So because this system is at an equilibrium, which is unique only to weak acids, we know with strong acids you don't get equilibriums. So that's why strong acids are not useful to make buffers. It's only weak acids. Um, you know, the reaction can go forward and it can go reverse. And that's the beauty of a buffer system, okay? If we add an acid to this reaction, uh, the conjugate base here is present to neutralize any acid that we add. If the, uh, any base is added to a system or a solution, then the weak acid will neutralize any base that's added. And I'm going to, if you didn't understand what I just said, I'm going to draw a diagram that demonstrates how a buffer works. I think this diagram is really helpful. Um, I'm not necessarily asking that you memorize it for the exam or anything, but it is helpful to know how buffers respond. And so um, let's say we have a weak acid. I'm going to generalize any weak acid as HA, and then I'm going to draw A minus right here, the conjugate base, all right? And I'm going to draw my little double arrow in between. So I, I hope you would get some paper and draw this with me um, as you're watching this video, as you would in live lecture. All right, that's how this is going to be most helpful to you. So there's our weak acid conjugate base. Um, let's say that some strong base is added to uh, the, the solution or um, in a biological system. And what does strong base do? Okay, a strong base, my example here is OH minus hydroxide. Strong base would lower, oh, sorry, that's wrong. Whoops, I meant to erase this. Uh, it would not lower, it would, it would raise pH, okay? That's what strong base would do, raise pH. Well, we don't want pH to, to change in a biological system or a laboratory setting. And um, so if any base is introduced via a chemical reaction or metabolism or any medications that someone may be taking, um, and you have this weak acid present, it is going to see that strong base, okay? So the strong base comes in, and the weak acid is going to kind of swoop it up so I'm going to draw these kind of two lines coming together. And um, the weak acid would donate, specifically it's the hydrogen here off the weak acid that's going to be donated to the strong base. And what that's going to make is water. Okay, so OH minus when it gets this hydrogen here, 
um, from weak, the weak acid, it makes HOH, which is H2O, and this is neutral, okay? And it doesn't change pH, okay? So we have neutralized the strong base to water, and then look at what is left over in the process of doing this. More conjugate acid, okay? When, when the weak acid gives up the hydrogen, it by default makes more of the conjugate base, okay? <clears throat> so when the strong base is added, it would threaten to raise pH. The weak acid is going to neutralize it, and in doing so, it um, creates more conjugate base, okay? All right, what if, in the opposite corner down here, uh, we add strong acid, such as HCl? So what would strong acid do to the pH of any solution, it would lower pH, okay, because strong acid disassociates into H plus, HCl is going to lose all of its H's, and Cl minus, okay, and it's this H plus right here, the more you have it in solution, the lower pH is, and we don't want pH to change in a, again, a biological system or laboratory setting. Um, so how is the buffer going to respond to this? Well, the conjugate base over here, A minus, is going to see that H plus, and it's going to swoop it up. It's going to react with it, in other words, okay? And when it does so, H plus and A minus make what? They make more HA, more weak acid, okay? Nothing is made as a byproduct. They just come together and make more of the weak acid. Okay, now the weak acid right here doesn't... <coughs> Oops. Change pH. Okay, it's in the non-disassociated form of the acid, so it doesn't change pH. Um, so this is how a buffer system would respond to things that could raise or could lower pH by reacting with those those elements by neutralizing those things. So that's why it's important in a buffer that you have. Um, a certain concentration of the weak acid and a certain concentration of its conjugate base present at all times to react with anything that could be added to the solution and to neutralize it. So let's keep going. Here's kind of a, a summary of that diagram in case you want to learn that and hang on to that. So I want to ask you a few questions to kind of maybe see how you're thinking about buffers so far. Um, let's pretend we have this acetic acid equilibrium up here with acetate, the conjugate base. So what happens to pH if we add NaOH to water? Well, it's kind of a trick question because we don't have a buffer in place. Um, NaOH with water, there's, there's no defense there to neutralize. This, this is a strong acid, and there's no defense there to neutralize it. Okay, so pH would increase, okay? Because all this OH is being added to the solution. Water is not a buffer, has no elements to neutralize the OH minus, so pH would increase. It's, it's defenseless against a change in pH. pH. Now, what happens, though, to pH if we add NaOH to the above reaction, meaning our buffer system up here, um, the acetic acid reaction, um, if it's at equilibrium, well, when we add NaOH, we know, we said, according to our, let me erase my circle, that our weak acid, which in this case is our um, acetic acid here, is going to react with OH minus, okay? So the weak acid, the answer is the weak acid, here it's acetic acid, would neutralize the OH minus, which is from sodium hydroxide. And it would not change pH. Okay, now what happens to pH if we add HCl to the above reaction egg equilibrium? We know HCl, if you look up at the buffer diagram in the top right corner, um, is gonna generate a lot of H plus, okay? And according to our buffer diagram, what it shows is that the conjugate base is going to react with the weak, or sorry, the H plus from HCl, and it's going to make more HA, more of the weak acid, okay? So here the answer is that acetate, CH3COO minus, because that's the conjugate base in our reaction, will neutralize the HCl, okay? <clears throat> All right. Um, that's a little bit on buffers. We have a, a few more things to find out, though. Um, the title of the slide says, Finding pH of Buffers. All right. Um, this is a little more complicated. 
uh, because we have a weak acid and we have a conjugate base present. So um, it says this, we can find the pH of a buffer solution if we know the concentrations of the acid, the weak acid, and the conjugate base, okay? So it's not just, we can't use the same equation for pH that we had earlier, which is this. We have this equation, pH equals the negative log of the concentration of H+, plus. okay? We can't just use this equation uh, because the weak acid and the conjugate base, the ratio of these things at an equilibrium, are both going to affect the amount of H plus present in solution. Um, and, and it's shifting back and forth, so uh, we have to use a little bit more of a complex equation, all right? Now, it is derived from Ka for weak acid. And I'm not going to show you the derivation. You don't have to know the derivation, but you do need to know the equation. And the equation is a new equation called the henderson hasselbalch equation, and it's right here. And it says this. This is specifically, this is only for buffers. Okay, so now we have two different equations for pH. Um, the equation up here is just for regular solutions, like, like maybe a strong acid solution or even a weak acid solution. But... Um, when I tell you you have a buffer, or if I allude in any problem that uh, it is a buffer problem, you have to use the henderson hasselbalch equation. Okay, you can't just use the other equation for pH. So the equation is this, pH equals pKa plus the log of, so there's a lot going on here. This right here is the conjugate base, and this down here is the weak acid. Okay, remember brackets mean concentration, so I'm going to read the equation again. It's the pH equals the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the weak acid. All right? Um, so there's several pieces to this equation, and the first piece I need to explain is pKa. All right? Now, you guys remember that there's a table of pKa values. Um, I introduced it in lecture when we had a live lecture, and I talked about um, weak acids. I showed you this table. And that table has a bunch of Ka values for weak acids. So what is pKa? pKa, remember what P stands for? P stands for the negative log. And so it's the negative log of any Ka value. Okay? Um, you would take that Ka value, plug it in to this equation, take the negative log of it, and you get pKa. <clears throat> and that is a variable here in our henderson hasselbalch equation. All right? The other things are just the concentration of the conjugate base and the weak acid. Okay, so remember, conjugate base always goes on top, weak acid always goes on bottom. You will need to know this equation for exam four. You will need to know and memorize the henderson hasselbalch equation because I promise you what we're about to do is called a buffer equation or a problem here in a minute and um, you will need to use henderson hasselbalch equation for it. We're not to the buffer problem yet because I want to tell you a few more things about buffers. So last, before we work a few problems with buffers, um, here is a list of qualities of a good buffer. All right, um, it is a solution of a moderately weak acid in its conjugate base. I've already said that several times, all right? Um, but you can't use a strong acid to make a buffer. Uh, next, it contains equal, approximately equal amounts of weak acid in conjugate base. So that means at equilibrium, you know, if I had 0 0.5 molar of my weak acid, I want to have roughly 0 0.5 molar of my conjugate base. Uh, when I explained equilibrium to everybody back in Chapter 7, I said that doesn't mean you have equal amounts of reactants and products. But here, in a good buffer, you want equal amounts of your weak acid and your conjugate base, okay? Because you want to be able to neutralize anything that comes into contact with the buffer, okay? You need to have both sides ready to go. If I had, you know, for example, if I had um, a lot of my weak acid, like 0 0.5 molar of my weak acid, but I only had like 0 0.01 molar of my conjugate base, that would not be a, a good buffer because I have very, very little of my conjugate base. And so if acid is added to my buffer, I don't really have much ability to neutralize very much of it, okay? Um, so, we, so we would not want this setup where we have unequal amounts of our weak acid and conjugate base. <clears throat> Next, this means that an weak acid to conjugate base ratio works best as a buffer when the solution is being kept at a pH, which is approximately the same as its pKa. So what does this mean? Well, it kind of goes back to the henderson hasselbalch equation. Um, if the concentration of these things are roughly equal, like let's just say this is 0 0.5 molar and this is 0 0.5 molar, molar going with our illustration here, um, the log of any number divided by itself mathematically is zero, okay? In fact, grab your calculator and check me if you want to. 
I'm getting my calculator so that maybe you'll get yours and hit the log button on your calculator and do 0.5 divided by 0.5 and you'll notice that it equals zero okay so the log of any number divided by itself is zero okay and which is what we want we want equal concentrations of these things in a good buffer but what that means is that you want the pk to be equal to the ph that's when you know you've got a good buffer set up ready to go okay because that's what is left pk plus zero is just pk so when the pk ph is the same as or equal to its pk you got a really strong buffer okay um, lastly, the molar amounts of weak acid and conjugate base need to be about 10 times greater than the amount of any acid or any base that might be added to the solution. Okay, so let me go find that buffer diagram. <clears throat> right up here. What this last quality is saying that is that, you know, if I'm going to, if, if, uh, if I say, oh, about 0 0.01 um, molar of base is going to be added, I need to at least have 10 times that amount of my weak acid and conjugate base present. So 10 times that would be 0 0.1 molar. I would want at least these concentrations. Whoops. Okay, notice that this concentration here is 10 times... Um, you know, this concentration up here. So you want way more of your buffer elements present than the things like the strong base or the strong acid that might be added to the buffer so that you have plenty there to neutralize it, okay? So know these qualities of a good buffer. It makes for great content on a multiple choice question. All right, so here's a practice problem. We're gonna work this problem and then a, a full on buffer problem and that'll be it for this video. So it says this, you want to prepare a buffer solution with a pH of five. Which acid and its conjugate base should I use? Okay, so I've got several different um, options here. Formic acid, acetic acid, propanoic acid, and ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. And then I'm given the Ka values for each of these. Now, remember, if we go back to our qualities of a good buffer, I'm gonna key in on this third thing here, which says this, we want a, pH, uh, a buffer whose pH is going to be equal to the same as its pKa. So I'm told that my pH is going to be 5. We, or it's going to be a buffer solution with a pH of 5. So I want to see which of these has a pKa that's closest to 5. Well, I don't have the pKa, uh, I just have the Ka. So what I need to do is take the negative log, because remember, um, pKa equals the negative log of Ka. So if I take the negative log of all of these things, we'll see which one is closest to five. All right, so for the first one, I got the negative log of uh, the pK, I guess, of formic acid will be 3.7. So I hope you will sit here and calculate these with me. And then the negative log of the next one Acetic acid, then the pK is going to be 4.7. That's pretty close. And then the next one, uh, the pKa is even closer, 4.89. And then the next one, I got that the pKa is equal to 4.1. So just from judging their pKa values, you want to pick the weak acid here that's going to uh, give you a pKa closest to pH 5. And that looks like it's going to be propanoic acid. So I would want to go with that one for my buffer. All right. <clears throat> Next. Okay. We are about to start a what I call a buffer problem. And this has three parts. So this is part one of three, okay? Um, the first part is just calculating the pH of the buffer, all right? So I have just this um, generalized weak acid equilibrium reaction shown, and I have your Henderson-Hasselbalch equation just for you to reference at the top of the slide. Just beneath that is where the question is. So the first question says, what is the pH of a buffer? That's always part one, calculating the pH of a buffer solution 
that is made with 0.1 molar, it says HF, and 0.12 molar NAF. And then it gives you the Ka value of HF, all right? Uh, so, how do we do this? Well, we're going to have to use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. It says what is the pH, and the Henderson Hasselbalch equation allows us to calculate pH. That's the equation for pH of a buffer. We cannot use pH equals the negative log of H plus, okay? This one is not for buffers. So the first thing we have to decide is which of these components, HF or NAF, which one is the weak acid? HF or NAF? And remember, things can only be acids if they have a hydrogen in them. So this up here, HF, is our weak acid, okay? And another key is that you'll never have a Ka value for something that's not an, an acid. So if it gives you the Ka value for HF, that one is your weak acid. All right, um, so the first thing we need to do, now that we've decided which one is the weak acid, that makes NAF the conjugate base. Step one is uh, you need to calculate the pKa, all right? So pKa is equal to the negative log of 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4. So this is step one, calculate the pK. And when I do that, I get that pK is equal to 3.46 if I round. <clears throat> All right, so that's step one. Step two is you're going to plug in the concentrations. Well, now step two is you're going to plug everything into the henderson hasselbalch equation. So pH equals pKa, which is 3.46. I'm, I'm just following along with this equation right up here, okay? So I said, I said pH equals, I plugged in my pKa, and it's plus the log of, I'm going to put big brackets here, you want to put your, remember, you want to put your conjugate base on top, and that is NaF. So I'm going to put the 0 0.12 molar, the concentration of that, on top, and I'm going to divide it by the concentration of the weak acid, which is 0 0.1 molar. And then I just solve for pH. So I'll say that plus the log of 0 0.12 divided by 0 0.1. And I got that pH equals 3.54. And that is the first part of a buffer problem. Okay. Now, places people mess this up is they will forget to put a plus sign here. They'll put a minus sign since on the other pH equation it's a negative log. Okay, So don't forget in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation it's plus the log of blah, blah, blah. The other place they'll mess up is they'll accidentally um, invert these concentrations. They'll put the weak acid concentration on top and the conjugate base on the bottom, things like that. So you want to make sure you know the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, have it memorized for the exam, and um, so you don't miss any of these parts. All right, that's part one. Let's go to part two. Part two is um, what happens, part two and part three, you never know what order they're going to be in, but part two here is what happens when you add some base. So the addition of strong base okay and it could be this is a strong acid um, but we're going to see what happens to our buffer when we add a strong base and when we add a strong acid and here we're dealing with the base first okay so the question is what is the ph of one liter so um, of the same buffer which has 0.1 molar hf 0.12 molar naf and um, we're now going to add 0 0.02 moles of sodium hydroxide all right, so we're going to add strong base and see how that changes the concentration of our weak acid and conjugate base. So you might want to refer to that buffer diagram from earlier to see um, which thing is going to neutralize the strong acid. Or what did I just say? Which thing is going to neutralize the strong base? Sorry, not strong acid. So the way we're going to do this is <clears throat> the first thing I notice is that units for my buffer components weak acid and the conjugate base are in molarity. And when I talk about my strong acid, I keep saying strong acid, when I talk about the strong base that I'm adding here, um, it's in units of moles. Okay, so we first need to get all of these on the same page. Like we need to ha have them all be in molarity. So how would we calculate? the Step number one here 
um, for part two and part three of a buffer problem, step number one is you want to calculate the molarity of whatever substance is being added. Okay, so here we're adding a strong base. So I want to take the number of moles, 0 0.02 moles of NaOH. And how do we calculate molarity? It's moles over liters. And I'm told that I have one liter of my buffer. And that could be any volume. I could say you have 500 milliliters. I could say you have 0.8 liters. I could say you have 1.2 liters. It's not always going to be one liter. All right. But here it is one liter. And the number of moles could be anything as well. So you just want to take the moles, whatever it is. You want to take the volume, whatever it is, divide those and calculate molarity. And here it's a nice uh, math problem. It's just 0 0.02 molar of NaOH. That's how much we're adding. So now that we have the same units that match our buffer components, um, the next thing we want to do is we want to see how are the um, how are the concentrations of these things going to change. We can't just go and plug these concentrations back into our um, Henderson-Hasselbalch equation the way we did in part one, because the concentrations are going to change. They're going to change so that they neutralize all of this base. So the way the easiest way to go about this and to calculate these things is to set up what I call an ice chart. I-C-E, ice chart. <clears throat> I stands for the initial concentrations, which the problem will always give you. C stands for how they're going to change. E stands for the new equilibrium concentrations, and that is what you will plug in to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So I'm going to write my weak acid and my conjugate base up here. Okay, and I'm going to write, plug in their initial concentrations, which are 0 0.1. The problem always gives us this, and 0 0.12. And then I want to plug in by how much are these things going to change. Well, they're going to neutralize all the base we add, so they're going to change by this much. And when I add a strong base to a buffer, what neutralizes it? Does the weak acid neutralize it, um, or does the conjugate base neutralize it? So if you go back and look at the buffer diagram a few slides earlier, it's always the weak acid that neutralizes base. Okay, I'm going to write that. Weak acids neutralize base. So that means some of my HF is going to be used up. It's going to sacrifice some of itself to neutralize the strong base. So it's going to go down. So I'm going to put a minus sign on that column, and it's going to be decreased by 0. 0 0.02 molar. And in the process of doing that, if you remember from the buffer diagram, it's going to make more conjugate base. So I'm going to be adding 0. 0.02 molar to this column. All right. Now I'm going to calculate my new equilibrium concentrations. So I'm going to say 0.1 minus 0. 0.02 is what? And it should be 0. 0.08 molar. All right. Then I'm going to say 0.12 plus 0 0.02 is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to 0 0.14 molar. Okay. So these are my new equilibrium concentrations. These are what you plug into the Henderson, I'm going to abbreviate, Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. All right. So Henderson-Hasselbalch, if you remember, it's, I'm going to highlight it. It's right up here in the green. So we're going to use this equation, plug everything in. So pH equals the pKa. What is the pKa? This, we need to go back and see what we had for part one. We calculated it in part one. Okay, so we need this number. This never changes. Okay, your buffer components will never change between parts one, two, and three of a buffer problem. It'll always be the same buffer. So our pKa will be the same for every single step. So you need to plug in. And notice, I'm not coming to get the pH. Okay, that's just your answer to part one. I want the pKa value that we calculated in part one. So I'm going to plug in 3.46 <clears throat> plus the log of my new concentrations. And remember, it's conjugate base that goes on top, which is my concentration for NAF. So I'm going to put the 0 0.14 molar there, and I'm going to put the weak acid concentration on bottom. All right. So now pH equals, we'll just calculate this. We'll do 3.46 plus the log of 0.14 divided by 0 0.08. And my pH is going to be 
So when I added really strong base, 0 0.02 moles of NaOH, what I see is that my pH it increased slightly from 3.54 to 3.7, all right? And that's not bad. Um, I said buffers resist, when I introduced buffers on slide one of this video, I said they resist changes in pH. They don't keep it perfectly still, but they prevent it from changing a lot. And we can see here the buffer did a good job. Um, it didn't cause the pH to change drastically from its initial pH. All right, that's part two. This is the last part. Part three, we're going to play the opposite scenario. Here we're looking at the addition of strong acid. And remember that part two and three could go in either order. You could, it doesn't matter if you play it through the scenario of acid first or base first. All right, and just for fun, why don't we change the volume? Why don't I say, you know what, I have 0 0.8 eight liters of the buffer instead of one liter because I don't want y'all to just get used to the same numbers all the time. So what is the pH? Now same question in all three parts. What is the pH of the and same buffer 0.1 molar HF and 0.12 molar NAF buffer solution. So we have the same buffer solution in each part. So same weak acid component, same conjugated base component. But this time we're adding 0.2 moles sorry, 0 0.02 moles of nitric acid, HNO3. So remember, step one is to convert this to molarity. Molarity. So molarity equals 0 0.02 moles of my HNO3. And I want to divide that by the volume, which is here, 0 0.8 liters. Okay. So 0 0.02 divided by... 0.8, and I got that it's 0 0.025 molar, okay, of HNO3. This is another place people mess up on buffer um, problems is they'll forget to convert moles to molarity, and that will not give you the right equilibrium concentrations that you need to plug into your henderson hasselbach equation. All right, now we're going to set up our ice chart. and write the buffer components, the weak acid and the conjugate base at the top. And plug in their initial concentrations, which will always be the same. You don't go back here and get these concentrations and plug those in as your new initials. No, you have the same initial concentrations and they're given to you in the problem. Okay, and that's what you plug in for row I, initial concentrations. I just wrote an I. Should just be a one. And 0 0.12 molar for the conjugate base. All right, now by how much are these things going to change? Well, they're going to neutralize, it's going to neutralize all of the strong acid we added. So they're going to change by that amount. And what neutralizes acid? Does weak acid neutralize acid or does the conjugate base neutralize acid? And any, it should honestly, common sense here should tell you, base neutralizes acid. So it is the conjugate base that neutralizes the strong acid. Okay, so what that means is that NAF here, that's our component that's going to react with the HNO3. So NAF, it's going to sacrifice some of itself to neutralize HNO3. So I'm going to put the minus sign on my conjugate base column this time, and I'm going to put the plus sign on my weak acid column this time. Notice that that is opposite what we did earlier. Earlier, we're subtracting from the weak acid column, and we're adding to the conjugate base column because we were adding a strong base. But now, this time we're adding a strong acid, and so it's the conjugate base that's going to be reduced for the sake of neutralizing this acid. And in the process of doing that, we'll make more HF, more of the weak acid in our buffer system, All right? So um, we're gonna say minus 0 0.025 and plus 0 0.025 molar. Now always include your units, please, for full credit. All right, so 0.1 minus 0 0.025 is 0 0.075. And 
Oh, what did I do? I subtracted again, didn't I? See, I can mess up too. Um, this should be 0 0.125 molar now. And 0.12 minus 0 0.025 should be 0 0.095 molar. And I'm gonna double check myself. Yeah. And these are the equilibrium, equilibrium concentrations that you'll plug into the henderson hasselbach equation, which is right up here for you, in case you forget it or don't have it memorized yet, pH equals pK, same pK that we've had this whole time. And if you forgot what it was, just go back up to the last place you wrote it. We wrote it on the previous slide, same number here, 3.46 plus the log of the concentration of conjugate base on top, which is now the 0 0.095, and the concentration of a weak acid on bottom, 0 0.125. So you will do three, now plug it all in to your calculator, 3.46 plus the log of 0 0.095 divided by 0.125. And I got that the pH after it neutralizes, all that strong acid will end up as 3.34. So comparing that to our initial pH, which we calculated on part one, so we started at, with nothing added to our buffer, the resting pH was 3.54. When we added some base, it rose a little bit to 3.7, and when we add strong acid, this amount at least, it dropped a little bit to 3.34, but that's not bad. That's a good buffer. It's maintaining pH right around its initial pH. So um, this is it for our buffer section. The next thing we're going to do in the next video, we'll discuss the butter, uh, butters, buffers specifically in the body. So I will see.